Deadpool number 30 by Jerry Duggan and Mike Hawthorne. Scott Adsit puts his resignation letter from S.H.I.E.L.D. in the mail, as well as goodbye letters, even one to Deadpool. He walks to the bridge to jump, first throwing his S.H.I.E.L.D. badge and then nearly throwing his pistol, before seeing a couple of others who beat him to the punch. Meanwhile, a missile with a payload of supplies from the International Space Station takes off. Overshooting the target, Deadpool's on board as well. He tells the crew that he's taking their ship to space to gather weapons to finally kill his nemesis, Madcap. As he's nearly unkillable, the being who once merged with Deadpool is going to take a lot of firepower to bring down. He lands on the moon in search of the Watcher's tomb. Once there, he loots various things, even watching some of the mystical being's disaster porn. Looking for a live battle to join, he finds one. He somehow finds a surfboard and launches a sail in the air, propelling himself along with it. He lands on a world at war. As he draws his, uh, lightsaber, he begins decapitating various combatants. Finally kicking one in the nuts, he calms down long enough to have a conversation. Over the course of the next painful and space-wasting pages, it turns out he's looking for nowhere. After a long and unnecessary who's-on-first routine, he kills the alien and then has a nervous breakdown. The Nova Corps swings by overhead and takes the fetal position Deadpool to Emerald Station, now commanded by none other than Scott Adsit. He addresses the new Nova recruits, including a Skrull who won't wear his helmet. Being accused of speciesism, he walks away, only discover Deadpool. Adsit tells him that he joined the Nova Corps just to get away from him. Deadpool asks him to bring him to the armory and later asks him about the most powerful weapon in the galaxy. Scott tells him it would be the, quote, ultimate nullifier, and Wade immediately asks the computer to print him a copy of one. Taking it, he teases some card-playing Novas who freak out and tells him that he's headed for nowhere. Word quickly spreads around the galaxy that some idiot is armed with the nullifier. Himdall calls Asgard to notice, and Lady Sif commands a Viking ship to war. Deadpool nears the giant celestial head known as Nowhere and immediately finds a pimp to sell him some weapons. He brings him to a bar where various arms dealers and Thor folk are there awaiting him. Lady Sif demands the weapon, and Deadpool leaps behind the bar, pulling out a laser. He disintegrates one of the bigger aliens before being disarmed by a Viking. Pulling his swords, he chops the arms off the guy. As more and more death ensues, Sif demands that he stand down. Instead, he shoots the now armless guy, sending him to the Viking afterlife. He's scarcely welcome, though, and they mock him for losing to Deadpool. Back in the land of the living, Sif cuts Deadpool's arm off. Taking a few jabs at each other, he mocks her for dating Thunderstrike when a massive brood alien comes crashing in. They both engage the monster, with Wade getting vomited on and later severely intoxicated. As the Asgardians and other aliens keep fighting the brood, it turns out more and more that Deadpool is not okay. They eventually defeat the Queen, and as they plan on how to dissect Wade to get the nullifier back, he gets up, only he's far from okay. A scene from Aliens plays out as a scary-looking beast protrudes from Wade's chest, killing random others around him. Sif throws a punch, and the little monster vomits in her eyes, blinding her. She staggers outside the bar, offering gold to whomever can kill Deadpool. Equipping the parasite with a tiny Deadpool mask, he hacks scores of people apart singing Time of My Life from Dirty Dancing, or if you're too young, that song from the Sandals commercials. He murders everyone. Eventually the spree draws the attention of Rocket Raccoon, though even he's not up to the challenge. He picks up a beer, even pouring some out for his little homie. Wade is ready for the little guy to go, but crosses its little bug arms in refusal. Sadly for him, this isn't an option, and Deadpool saws the little bastard in half with a chainsaw. It scurries off and Wade expels the rest of its body like popping a huge zit. Suddenly a well-dressed man approaches him. With a hawk on his shoulder, Monarch Starstalker introduces himself to, quote, Santa Claus, a.k.a. Wade Wilson. He offers to purchase the nullifier for a buyer, but Wade tries, Wade tries to skeef the guy's blaster instead. He fires a shot into Deadpool's chest, but the merc with a mouth gets right back up. Speaking to an unknown individual over comms, he tells him the nullifier is fake, but he might be interested in the subject himself. Monarch brings him to the Collector, who is interested in Wade's regenerating powers after Monarch shoots his hand off and it regrows. After some discussion, the Collector isn't interested in Deadpool, but what he is interested in is Madcap. The Collector gives Wade a tour of his museum. Using a small mirror, he's able to gather enough info about the psychotic clown and he decides that he wants it. 
Deadpool tells him that they have a deal, and the Collector gives him a special beacon to activate once he finds him. Asking for any special instructions once he acquires him, and he says that he requires a steady diet of pickles and the Ghostbusters theme song. Wade swipes a white studded glove and gives Monarch a going away present, a live grenade. Porting him back to nowhere, he asks the bartender for something strong. Back where he came from, Monarch explodes and the Collector puts him back together, though Santa Claus of Earth has made an enemy for life. Wade sits at the bar drowning his sorrows, still wearing the Michael Jackson glove with a green-skinned lady of the night comes looking for company. She gives him a special elixir which will make him unbeatable, for some reason, but before leaving, asks her how much for an hour of her time. Recapping his adventure, he goes over the highs and lows of his space adventure, but before leaving, he gives his old buddy Scott Adsit a romp with the lady of his dreams. Okay, recapping this comic is starting to become excruciating. There's still like 11 pages left, so blah, 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 blah. He comes back, and the Hydra-controlled Captain America is there, recruiting him for what will become Deadpool Secret Empire. And with that, this ridiculous 80-page comic comes to a well-appreciated close. You know, Deadpool still sells an insane amount of comic books, and I completely don't understand how. Not that I don't like him, but this oversized 80-damn-page novel comes right off the heels of the oversized issue number 25. Gary Duggan should be working harder on Uncanny Avengers rather than churn out three times the size of any normal, banal, and boring adventure Deadpool requires. Either way, if reading a bunch of crap that literally goes nowhere, pardon the pun, then this is the issue for you. It's sadly, though, not the issue for me. I give it a 5 out of 10. If you for some reason like this video, there's hundreds more like it, spanning several current and classic story arcs. Click the boxes here for more playlists. This video is also accompanied by my blog at nerdiestkidyouknow.blogspot.com or nerdiestkidyouknow.com. You can also follow links to my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages, as well as a link to this very issue for sale on my eBay page by clicking below. For the Nerdiest Kids You Know, I'm Sam Torito. Thanks for watching.